Hi everybody and welcome back to Harry's Music Room. Uh, today we're going to do a brief history of another band from the 1960s uh, from in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> at a time far, far away, by a band called the Grassroots. This is a uh, photo that I had signed by Rob Grill, lead vocalist, many years ago. They played at the Tacoma Dome. Anyways, um, around 1965, uh, producer P.F. Sloan, or songwriter P.F. Sloan, and producer Steve Barry had written a song, and uh, it was called Where Were You When I Needed You. They did a demo, um, printed up some records, sent it out to local uh, San Francisco area radio stations, and it kind of got some... Uh, some recognition they started playing it people requested it they liked it it became obvious to sloan and barry that they needed the, the record when they put it out they put it out under the name uh the grassroots so when it got popular they realized they were going to need a real band called the grassroots so uh they searched for a band that they could find that would fit what they needed to to have done and they found a band from San Mateo that had won a battle of the bands. And they were called the uh, Bedouins. And uh, the band was signed. They became the, the grassroots. Uh, they re-recorded the song, Where Were You When I Needed You, with their current uh, vocalist at the time. And his name was Willie Fulton, F-U-L-T-O-N. He later became an early member of uh, the group Tower of Power. Anyways, um, so this was their new band. This was going to be the new Grassroots. Um, ABC Dunhill had them open for the Mamas and Papas and uh, Barry McGuire. They actually became the house band at a club on the Sunset Strip called The Trip. And uh, they were getting a little... Uh, disillusioned with Dunhill, they wanted to record their own songs, which happens with every band. They wanted to move in the direction they wanted to move. Dunhill didn't want them going that way. Um, Sloan and Barry, you know, they were really talented uh, producer and, and singer songwriter or songwriter, and they wanted to do their songs. And as a result, um, the band split up. Dunhill was back to, you know, starting at zero. So they went looking for more bands and more people that could become the grassroots. Um, the most successful band they put together was uh, a group of members of a band called the 13th Floor. Now, that's not the 13th Floor Elevators. It was just 13th Floor. So they found this band and decided they were going to be the new grassroots. They needed a, a vocalist, and they found Rob Grill, who was a guitarist and a singer. And they put Rob together with the 13th floor and uh, had Rob play bass, even though he didn't know how to play the bass. So he had to convert from guitar to bass. And because uh, they already had a guitarist um, by the name of Creed Bratton. Uh, Creed, you may know, uh, later played a fictionalized version of himself on uh, the sitcom The Office. So it's funny that when you watch Creed on The Office to think that he was in the grassroots, but he was. So anyways, when they signed him, Dunhill said, you guys can keep your name if you want, or you can become the grassroots an established name, a recognized name that sells, you know, they weren't super popular yet, but they were selling. Their first album came out and it was so-so. So the band decided they will be known as the Grassroots. So now they've got Rob Gorilla as their lead vocalist. So they do another recording of Where Were You When I Needed You? And that one is the one that everybody is familiar with. That took off. And the band took off, really took off there. Um, most of their songs, they used the Wrecking Crew, which was the best 
session people in the business, but then everybody used the wrecking crew. It really, just about everybody. Except the turtles. White whale. He, Mark or uh, um, Howard says a white whale was too cheap to pay him, so they had to play their own instruments. But anyways, um, so they re-recorded Where Were You When I Needed You. Um, now, the when they went on tour, the band members did play their own instruments, and they were capable, but the label wanted uh, the wrecking crew, so that's what they got. So uh, Creed Bratton played on three albums. He played on Let's Live For Today, Feelings, and an album called Loving Things. Um, and again, it got to the point where he didn't want to do what Dunhill wanted him to do. He wanted to play his own instruments. He didn't want the Wrecking Crew playing them. He wanted to play songs they wanted that they wrote, and not songs that with the you know they Dunhill picked for them that were usually Sloan and Barry uh, creations. So after a uh, really bad show at the Fillmore East in 1969, um, a intoxicated reportedly intoxicated Bratton was fired from the band it was such a disastrous performance so that's 1969 by 74 the band most of the band had left it was they were disillusioned um, the hits weren't coming that much anymore um, the band left so grill Rob grill all this time he's the constant in this band um, puts together new members with some former members and they go back out and, and they go out as the grassroots again um, they have one more single that hits the charts called mama sita and that was 1975 that was their last chart single and it didn't go very far up the chart at all um around 79 rob grill decides he's just going to do a solo thing and he gets uh lindsey buckingham Mick Fleetwood and John McVie to play on his album. Um, apparently they got along pretty good because Fleetwood Mac had Rob Grill open for them on their Tusk tour. So that, that went okay. Uh, now we get up to like 1980 and Grill's putting the band back together. He's not doing the solo thing. He wants to be the grassroots. He gets the rights to the name, um, goes back out on tour. Uh, 1984, he's touring like Japan, uh, the U.S. He's doing world kind of tours, but he's doing it with uh, like the Happy Together, you know, the oldies circuit, the, the old uh, the monkeys and things like that that they are doing their oldies shows. Well, that's what Rob Grill is doing with the grassroots. And that's kind of the, the time period that I got this signed by him. So, um, Rob eventually passed away in, in 2011. The band continued on with their name, but with no original members in the band, but they were all people that Rob had personally picked to be in the band after he was gone. So the band carried on with his blessing. Um, they had a total of 21 singles on the Hot 100, Billboard Hot 100, uh, and I've got a list here of the songs. 19 they, they sold 20 million records so that's not bad uh, 1966 they had a single tip of my tongue 67 they had uh let's live for today which was an english cover version of let me see if i get this right pianji con me a 1966 hit for the anglo italian quartet the rokes I've never heard their song, but I am going to go look for it after this because I want to hear it. 67 also brought us a song called Things I Should Have Said. 68 gave us Midnight Confessions and Bella Linda, two of my favorite songs by them, especially Bella Linda. 1969, that's their year. Um, we got Love and Things, The River is Wide, I'd Wait a Million Years, and Heaven Knows. All great songs. 1970, we get Temptation Eyes, 71, Sooner or Later, and 71, we get their last really good single, and that's Two Divided by Love. As far as albums go, again, you know, they weren't a great album band. They really, I mean, they were a mix between an album band and a singles band. 
they weren't as, as bad as say uh, the Archies, but but most of the records that I have are compilations of, of and, and I have them all because they may have a song that's not on one, but the other one's got it and, and so on. But uh, this was the one I had as a kid. Just, I really, really was a big fan of the grassroots. And you can see here's Creed right here. And then uh, this one's called, there's 16 greatest hits. And then we have Leaving It All Behind. And this was a 1969 release. And then we have Move Along, and this is 1972. Different band members, as you can see. And then we have more Golden Grass. Dunhill was fond of gatefold covers. It reminds me so much of uh, Three Dog Night covers. Anyways, that's my take on uh, the grassroots. Short, brief history. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Let me know in your comments if you were a fan of the band or if you ever saw them or what your favorite song was and that kind of stuff. Again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. That's why I keep doing this. It's just fun. You know, it's fun to share your passion for music and, and uh, hear what other people have to think. So thanks. Ciao.